I am excited about what I saw Tuesday night. I liked Isaiah Thomas in Cleveland. Had a big impact on the game. First game with the Cavs. I think it's just going to get better and better. And I think it creates some real drama, uh, more than we had a week ago at least, as to what Cleveland can do against Golden State in the finals and what, of course, LeBron can do against Golden State. And that got me to thinking, who are the best five teammates of LeBron James's career? At number five, Ray Allen. Look, I know he was 37 years old and well past his prime when he joined LeBron in Miami, but still, where would LeBron's legacy be without Ray Allen? Ray Allen hit arguably the biggest shot in NBA history, down 3-2 to the San Antonio Spurs, down three, 17 seconds left. Ray Allen hits that corner three-pointer that forces overtime and sets the stage for LeBron to have a tremendous game seven and win his second title in Miami. Ray Allen has to be given love as one of LeBron's greatest teammates. At number four, Kevin Love. Oh, how everybody loves to hate on Kevin Love. They look at his numbers in Minnesota, then look at his numbers in Cleveland and say he's not the same player. He's falling off. No, he hasn't fallen off. It is difficult to be consistent, especially consistently great, as the definite third option on a team. And that's what he was behind LeBron and Kyrie. But this year is the second option. He's played the best ball of his career. He's one of six players averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. And I think he's played very well with LeBron this year. And I think people will appreciate that more as time goes on. At number three, Chris Bosh. Speaking of third options, I mean, Bosh gave up more offensively than any teammate LeBron has ever had. He went from averaging 24 and 11 his last year in Toronto to 16 and 7 his last two years with LeBron in Miami. But one thing Bosh realized as his offense was going down, I can make an impact defensively. And the trade off for him will be probably a Hall of Fame induction and two championship rings. Chris Bosch at number three. At number two, Kyrie Irving. This man would probably or maybe be number one if he hadn't demanded a trade. That said, nothing can take away what Kyrie did for the Cavs and LeBron James. Of course, like Ray Allen, he hit what could be one of the biggest shots in NBA history, the three-pointer that gave the Cavs the victory in Game 7 over Golden State in maybe the most historic finals of all time. Only time someone's come back from a 3-1 deficit. The Cavs win their first major sports league championship for the whole city of Cleveland in 52 years, and then, of course, they beat the best regular season team in history. A lot of people will wonder, what would have happened if Kyrie had stayed in Cleveland with LeBron? What I wonder is what would have happened in 2015 if Kyrie had not injured his knee in game one against Golden State. I don't have to stretch the imagination to think Cleveland would have won that series. And finally, at number one, you probably know it, <laughs> Dwayne Wade. People don't understand and appreciate the sacrifice that Dwayne Wade made when LeBron went to Miami in their second year, particularly when he decided to do it. But how many future Hall of Famers, how many alpha dogs? David Robinson gave his team to Tim Duncan, but Robinson wasn't really that alpha dog like Dwayne Wade was. He gave up his team to LeBron because it was best for the Heat. It was their best chance of winning. That is rare. Dwayne Wade was a great teammate for LeBron James. Remember, Dwayne's reputation wasn't at stake. Nobody, he had already proven he could lead a, lead a team to a championship. Nobody was questioning whether he had the courage or the heart in the clutch to lead a team to a title. They had those questions about LeBron. Dwayne stepped back, gave the team to LeBron, and then LeBron delivered and erased those questions. Great for his career, great for his legacy. And I'll even say this, even though Dwayne Wade's not what he used to be, if somehow, some way, Cleveland can win this title this year, you better believe Dwayne Wade will have a lot to do with it, and LeBron will have a lot of thanks to his main man, D. Wade, the best teammate LeBron's ever had. I want to welcome my man Jim Jackson into the zone, brother. It's always good to have you here. Ohio thing right that's here. That's right. That's right. Do, they, do, do people know you used to who? 
I don't uh, think they know that, dude. I, I tell them every chance I get. <laughs> I, I posted, I'll put up a picture of Chris <laughs> going to the basket back around the Cleveland area. They don't know. Well, you, I, I think they know you were like, I kind of refer to you as Ohio's first LeBron James. It, Seriously. In, in a lot of ways, because I was bigger. Yeah, you, um, and you passed. Yeah. You had, you know, skills. So that's why I can, I can relate to some of the things that LeBron does. When I watch him play, I can see a pass coming right away. Because we played, no, he's a much better athlete and mm-hmm. taller. But, I mean, at the time, I mean, that's one thing. You, you know, six six yeah, Playing point guard. Yeah, exactly. But you notice know about being in the Midwest. One thing we do, we get taught to play defense, rebound, you pass. Um, you know, you go, you go do all and score. Yeah. But you go have a complete all-around yeah. game. So it's not like one thing you do. In right. the Midwest, you get taught all of these different skill sets. So, it, right. I mean, it worked out for me. Not yeah, yeah, and in, in NBA, you became this huge score. Yeah, I know. I, it, it opened it was, up, you know. It I, ironically, it was because well, you know, my my rookie year, I held out. Yeah. Um, but then when I got there, my second year, man, we, we, we in Dallas, we basically had a CBA team, man. It was. No, well, we yeah, now y'all had all that talent. No, you, no, Jam- no, you talking no, about when you no, first got no, there? Man, my second year. Because Jamal came first. later. He came my second year. Okay. Quinn coached us. We won thirteen games that year. <laughs> okay. That was a, so, that, that was with Quinn. Yeah. So it was. Imagine winning thirteen games. So that means you win basically two games <laughs> a month. So yeah. how'd you and you and Quinn almost got in a fight? Yeah. What happened? So we we're playing the Clippers, right? We we're playing the Clippers. Dominique was playing. Okay. For the Clippers. For the Clippers, okay. and we we're playing here at the old sports arena. So end of the season, we're playing, and guys really don't want to play. I'm like. I'm going to get it. Yeah, I shoot like 37 times, right? <laughs> so Tony Campbell was on our team, yeah, Ohio okay, State yeah, guy. We're, we're in the locker room after the game. Now imagine, set the scene. I'm in the locker room. We look, we lost again. I got on a tile, and I got on ice bags, and I'm sitting there. I'm talking to Tony. I'm like, man, we should have won this game. No way we should have lost, blah, blah, blah. And Quinn walked by and was like, what would you say? <laughs> I said, I was telling Tony we should have won the game. He said, no, you said something about me or something. I said, Quinn, I didn't say nothing about you. Then he got it, got up on me. So we go back and forth. I'm like, Quinn, if I was to say something, I would say it yeah, to your yeah. face. But he stepped up on me. I didn't know what he was going to do. <laughs> so I jumped up, ripped off my uh, ice bag, towel fell so down. Naked. I'm naked. And we about to go at it in the <laughs> locker room. You know, but that's how, but that's what happens in the losing locker room. It's to like the little things. He misinterprets. I'm upset. Now, we're good friends today. We laugh yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But back then, it was different because it was so much tension from the losing. How often, because I've heard stories, it's not that unusual for a player and a coach to no. either get in a fight or at least come close to a fight, yeah, no, right? It's, How, not, it's not unusual. I mean, because it, it depends. I mean, it's, we got egos, coaches got egos. Mm-hmm. It's things we think as players we need to get done whether I'm playing or especially if I'm not, if a guy is disgruntled and unhappy, it boils to a point. Now, again, it's not college. So within 30 games, you might be done. You're talking yeah, about 82-game yeah. season, and this could be going on for a couple years maybe. So it's not – I'm not going to say it's rare because it's not. Yeah. Now, guys will verbally get into it a yeah. lot. Rarely do you see kind of coach player really – Like fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. Okay. But you will have some exchanges. I mean, because you know, I have exchanges – in the family atmosphere, yeah, let alone yeah. with people that I'm just getting to know. So yeah. um, it, it's not rare, the exchange part of it. Now, you played with Jason Kidd, uh-huh. his rookie, you know, some, rookie, his yeah, early, yeah, rookie, rookie year, year. some uh-huh. earlier. I've been one, and a lot of people compare Lonzo Ball to him. Yeah. What do you think of that comparison? Is it fair? Well, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a fair comparison from a couple different standpoints. One, you got size as a point guard. Mm-hmm. Six four, six Lonzo six five, six six, okay. J Kidd is six four, but but thicker. Um, the ability to see the court, mm-hmm. to get their teammates involved, very similar. The similarity of really not being able to shoot consistently from the perimeter. Now the difference being, I said this before, Lonzo Ball was more of a willing shooter. Okay. To shoot it. Yeah. J Kidd, which we had to, you know, kind of get J Kidd to, to force him to shoot it. Okay, um, his ability to affect the team mentally because you know you're going to get it, so I'm going to run harder. Okay. I love playing with him. He's a great person. All those things yep. are very similar. 
The difference is Jay Kidd, he affected the game on the defensive end a lot different. He got he played the passing lanes and got over screen and rolls for a rookie. Yeah. He did some things on the court defensively that separates him from Lonzo and um, he was a better finisher when he got to the basket. Okay. Because at times you see Lonzo right now, he'll get to yeah. the cup, but he's not finishing. Yeah. Jay Kidd, I mean, get to the basket. And one more thing, Jay Kidd, 94 feet, when he got it, he's pushing. he was a blur. So he played at a different tempo. When Lonzo plays at that tempo, not only is he better, but the Lakers are better. Mm-hmm. So he has to figure out how to marry those two, two things. But, you know, very similar but very different in some aspects. You think – are you one that thinks Lonzo will be a star? Well, I think kind of he can be a star. Be a good Whether he's a superstar, a transcendent player, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I do know that, Kristen, you've been around this for a long time. What the Lakers need from him is 12 to 15, yep. 10 assists, 8 rebounds. Okay? Because yep. you got Ingram that's scoring. Now Kuzma scoring. You got Nance that can score. You got Clarkson coming in. Mm-hmm. So if he can knock down – consistently knock down some shots. Just get comfortable. Yep. Increase his free throw percentage. Now he's able to do this, and he's going to get guys the ball. He has scores around him, so we're not expecting him to be... And again, I think you got to change your narrative, because the narrative has been Damon Lillard, right. Russell Westbrook, Kyrie or Irving, um, Laurie, all these point guards that can score. So you're trying to compare Alonzo to them. He's not them. Yep. You know, so you got to change your narrative when you look at who he should be mm-hmm. compared to these other players. One thing, I just want to ask you this about Jay Kidd, because uh-huh. I've had players tell me he was not verbal he on the court. He wasn't. Which is, un- we think, of, and I know he was a good leader, right. but talk about that, because guys told me he wasn't verbal. He was, obviously, his strength was getting up and yeah. down, but his strength wasn't even, I've heard some tell me, running the half-court offense Well, no, because he wasn't verbal. Well, you know what? It, the, good, the good part, and that's where Lonzo is like it, too. Lonzo's not, yeah, yeah. he's stoic he's when you see him on the court. But fortunately for us, when I was there in Dallas, Dick Mata, offensive genius. I mean, I, I was averaging 26, yeah. Masters averaging 25. Easiest 26 ever. Because the system was built off reads, almost like what, was they, it, what, what kind of system was it? Well, it was almost like what they ran in Utah with Carl okay. Malone and with John Stockton. It was a lot of UCLA cut, rub cups, you hit the wing, and whatever side the guard went in, on off the elbow is what play was going to be. So Jay Kidd really didn't, or I could run it. So you okay. really didn't have to be as vocal because it was a read. Okay. If I hit the wing and I went on the inside, that meant one thing. If I hit the wing and went on the outside, it meant something else. So now everybody else reacted. So Jay Kidd, from that perspective, didn't have to vocally do this. I was more the one of a talk because that's just, that's just how it was my whole career. Okay. I mean, I was the one doing all a lot of that stuff. So it complemented, you know, all our skill sets okay. at that offense when, um, you know, Dick Motta was there. Now you said you averaged 26 that year, fifth in mm-hmm. the league. That was your third year. Four. Fourth year. No, fourth, fourth in the, in the league. league yeah. <laughs> Bring that down a little bit. Just to let league. me know. Yeah, fourth in the league. <laughs> and then you had the ankle injury. Yeah. And I look at your careers, I think, I feel like that ankle injury kind of derailed up. you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was it. Now, we're going to get to the Cavs, but Derrick Rose is battling with, he's injured. Yeah. Although I think really the battle is like, Mentally. I've been a superstar my whole career. Oh, yeah. yeah. From the time I started playing basketball mm-hmm. to now, I think he's having trouble handling just being a pretty good player, but not a star. How did how tough is that? Because you had to go through that yeah. from being this potential superstar right. to, you know, just a just really average, good player. Yeah, average not, player. Yeah. Um, I mean, a good part between me and Derrick Rose, he got big contracts. Okay, yeah, he, got, he got the big contract. <laughs> he got the deal. Right so you know what? He can be mad all he wants, <laughs> but then when he go check that bank account statement, it's like, oh, okay, they that still coming in. <laughs> Make it a little bit better, so you don't have to go play for a contract. <laughs> I would have got after I got hurt and got out of Dallas. I was playing for contracts. So you're so. So I got hurt. My, that was before the rookie scale. So it was before the rookie scale. So I was still on my original six year deal. So this okay. is my third year. Okay. And fifty one games into the season is ironic too. We're playing in New Jersey, and it, and back then it was these Hirachi shoes. Oh really yeah, Really soft that Nike Michigan was wearing. So yeah, Nike yeah. wanted me to wear them, and I was like, man, I, I you know we're superstitious as yeah. as as athletes. You know that. I, I always wore my same shoes, and I'm and I'm at I'm warming up, and I'm like these shoes are too soft. I, 
I need to change him. I said, you know what? I'm going to go through the first half, and I'm going to change at halftime. Manya just come off a 44-point game the other night against Washington. Kill mm. ways. Kill ways. <laughs> but so I'm saying at halftime, I'm going to change my shoes. Within seven, eight minutes of the game is when I tore up my ankle. You know, coming across on Chris Williams, I stepped on, uh, on uh, Jason Williams' foot. Mm. So mm. now, back then, too, so it was a third-degree sprain. They said it would have been better if I would have broke it mm. because it, it would have healed. Is that the kind Brent, Grant Hill had? Well, he had the pin. He broke his, and he had pins in his. Okay. But they okay. said it would have been e- it, would, it would have healed better. Bone heals better than ligament. Once the ligament is stretched, anytime you sprain an ankle, you stretch a ligament. Yeah. But it's the degree in which you stretch it. So I'm a, I'm a right-handed player. I go off my left foot. I have no explosion. So that whole, and this is getting to Derrick Rose, I'm at the cusp of being, I'm at the fourth leading score. I'm the top yeah. scoring guard in the league. Now, again, Michael Jordan wasn't in the league at that time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you had Shaquille, Carl Malone, Elijah Wan, me. Oh, you're the top, yes. You know, and right then big. MASH. Yeah. Okay, so we're right there. And when that happens, you figure, okay, rehab, you get it together. But the rehab back then and therapy, not like it is now. So it took so much longer, and I lost strength in my knee. My, 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 to this day, I still got atrophy kind of really? in my, my thigh. And, um, but the mental part of going from you're at this high level, okay, yep. to not playing there anymore is people don't understand I it. It is, and it, it's a catch-22, too, because I always think about, well, I never got a chance to play in the playoffs when I was at my best, yeah. when I was kind of like in the spot the to man. do something. Yep. So I can only imagine what that feels like. So I never had it. Yep. Derrick Rose was at the high. I still see that dunk when he dunked on, uh, I forget who it was, for Phoenix, off two feet. Jogic. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it just, that was him. Yeah, yeah. And then to go from that in a, in a period of time where it was injury after injury, and now people questioning your game, they're questioning this. You're questioning whether you can still get it done. Yeah. You have your highs and lows. I talked about the contract. Throw it out the window because it don't mean anything. As much as I was joking about it, because internally you, all about you, feel, you still feel you have something to prove and you can be vi- viable and valuable, but you're not the same player. So you played against Jordan mm-hmm. and Kobe. Yep. How do you compare playing against both of those guys? I mean, uh, uh, the problem, see, the thing is in the league, when you're that good, you can't guard anybody one-on-one. Yeah. I mean, it's impossible. It, even with the rules is back then when you can you be could, physical, yeah, yeah. The, you got to have good side. help. I don't care. When I was scoring, I was going to get my points because yeah. I was going to have volume shots. I was going to get to the free throw line. So my whole thing was how can I make you less efficient? Okay. I'm like, oh, stop, because you're going to touch it too many times. It's just mm-hmm. what, what I loved about them was – they made you compete at a high level because they brought it from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Um, the aura around Michael when I first played, I tell you, when the first time I played against Chris, it was it was funny because I I'm, I'm known him before then. Okay. So you knew him personally. Yeah, working at his basketball camp uh, when I was coming out of college. Yeah. Uh, he actually called me before when I was getting drafted, trying to you know get me to go to David Falk. But it was funny. I played against him because my rookie year he was gone. Yeah. Okay, well, I, by the time I got there, after holding out, we had already played Chicago. Okay. So my second year was the 93, 90, so I mean. That was his first retirement. First retirement. retirement. Okay. So when I finally got a chance to play against him on the court, I swear to God, man, it was like, I wasn't scared because I, I can compete, but it was surreal. It was like when nobody else on the, in the arena, <laughs> you couldn't hear no noise. It was just me and him. The yeah. crowd was gone. It was it was a weird moment yeah, yeah. because this is somebody, you know, you looked up to and you saw and you finally got to get on the court and play with. And at that time, the Bulls just seemed like they were different. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. That was was that the year they won 72? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, just, it just they just felt when they walked in the building, it just felt different. Wow. You know what I mean? It was their NBA and then it was ours. <laughs> <laughs> it was just totally different. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Did he now when you went against him? Did he treat you like 
a you, rookie. I know you, I know I know you but he so what? Right no, nah, go right at me. And we used to have epic battles of talking back and forth. Really? Yeah. Oh, epic. So battle. you were a trash talker? Oh, big time. If you talk to me. Okay. So, uh, I, ironically, we, we got traded to Jersey. Me and Sam Cassell, the ninety six ninety seven season. We uh, beat him. Was that the year in the playoffs? No, no. It was it okay. was the regular season. Okay. John Calipari was the rookie coach. Yeah. Um, we beat him in Jersey. I had like 25, 20, Sam at 20. Yeah. I know, we talking. We go back to Chicago, and we playing, and I'm guarding Mike, and we talking. <laughs> so he hits a nice little fadeaway. He's running to the corner, and Steve Javi, the official at the mm. time, is talking. Mike was like, man, why you didn't call the foul? You should have called a foul. Steve was like, and we standing in the corner. Yeah. Steve was like, well, I thought you was going to blow by him. I said, <laughs> blow by who? I said, I can guard him. He said, JJ, you can't guard me. I said, you can't guard yeah. me. So we start going back and forth. But I ended up with 33. He had 28. I think we lost. But after the game, uh, we're walking out the huddle. And Joe Klein, who yeah, played with the Bulls before he was with us in Jersey, said, man, leave my, my young fellow alone. He said, no, me and J.J. cool, but tell him that's why he's wearing my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Were you playing in jokes? I was playing in jump, man, at the time. I said, yep, and I'm not changing him either. <laughs> yeah, but, we used to, but that, it was the best, man. And Kobe... Kobe, and I, I don't think, I, I think, what do you think about Kobe? Where do you think he ranks? I did my top 10 right. when he got his jersey retired. I had him seventh. Okay. Now I get my top 10. At 10, I had, uh, I, I'll go in the other one. Okay. I had Jordan number one, okay. uh, LeBron two, Kareem three, uh -huh. Magic four, Wilt five, Shaq, Shaq six. six. You had Shaq before Kobe. Because, uh, the reason, the way I picked between those two, because I had Kobe seven, was if I had to start a team, okay. I would take okay, Shaq. Okay, take yeah. Shaq. Uh, eight was Russell, Bill Russell. Right. Nine was Bird. And ten was Duncan. Duncan. Yeah. I mean, that's, here's the thing about, and I say this about Kobe, or we say the greatest player. When you talk about the greatest player, Kareem, his name gets brought up, but it's not with the same fervor, yep. not with the same yep. energy. Kobe the same way. And my take on it is this, is that they're two very similar people, personalities. Kobe and Kareem. Yes, because during their tenure, during their career, it was contentious with the media and people didn't really like them. Yep. So when you don't like a person like that, you're not going to really That's true. pull for them or give them the benefit of the doubt in certain things. Because there's no way that you talk about the greatest winner ever is Kareem from high school, yep. college, to the NBA. Yeah, it's most MVPs. Most MVPs. MVP. You changed the game of no dunking in college because of him, okay? <laughs> yeah. The most unstoppable shot in the history of the game was Kareem. Yeah. All-time leading. But yet and still, we don't hold him in that same regard as a Jordan or Bron yeah. because he didn't have the fascination or he didn't have the likability factor from media and a lot of fans. Yeah. Same thing with Kobe. Kobe, you think about what he was able to accomplish. Five championships. He only had one MVP. Should have got it in. 06. Yeah, that's 06. crazy. He should have yeah, got he, it. He went back to back years yeah. when uh, and Steve him got and Shaq it. only got two I know. combined. Now I played with Steve and Nash, Nash when they got two. it back to back. Okay. When Kobe, that second one, Kobe should have got. He should have got. Yeah. He had thirty plus points. Like and eight. he wasn't even because I think Shaq finished second in the voting that wow. year, and Kobe. Did they make the playoffs? Was that the year? I played on the team. We lost. It. We with were Kobe. up three one. Oh, that's on when Phoenix you're... and lost. That's a whole nother story. Uh, so it sounds to me like you got Kareem one and Kobe two. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, Le it's going to be tough to deny LeBron once it's done. As to over me, over Jordan, you think? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. See, I think what LeBron, not I don't think he's just going after stats right now, but I do think part of him understands I'm not going to get six, and even if I do, I've lost a lot of finals. Yeah. Right? So I'm not going to equal Jordan in terms of winning. But I can hold everything else. Him, oh, yeah, yeah, in terms everything of individual stats. Here's the thing, though. If LeBron plays, let's say his prime goes 17 or 18 years, right. and he's only got three rings, at some point it, people might look at it like, well, you played all these years in your prime, and you still only got three rings. You know? Well, but is it about the That could the work rings? against him. Kareem got a bunch Kareem of rings. Got Six. He got bunch. Right? I just think that's a part of it. I don't think it's just about the rings. Well, I think that's if, a part. If it's of it. just a part of it. Then what's going to be the separator then? If if you take Mike's six and say LeBron gets one more, okay. So that'll be one, two, four. 
that before. He's two behind. But he holds all the other records. He's been able to take multiple teams to a final. He hasn't had the best talent all the time, you know, early on. Yeah, yeah. So what's going to be the separator? What's going to be the what, what, what's going to make you skew towards Michael or skew towards LeBron if it's not just built on champ? Because the argument on championships, you go give it to Mike. But everything else, we ain't seen what yeah, we see with like LeBron. LeBron. Nothing like LeBron. Nah, it's it's so yeah. where you got Kobe then? Um, I got I got Kobe in my top ten. I got him around. For what he's accomplished, round six. Okay. okay. I mean, I still I love Duncan. Duncan is different because Duncan had to rely on the centers are always hard. Exactly. Because you they gotta need, rely on somebody to give you the ball. Yeah. Yep. You know, with a guard, you can go get it. Yep. A center, you're so re- relied upon. I, I need to get post position, I need to get this. And you need a good guard. And you need a good yeah. guard. With a you know, so it's it's a little bit different. But I I mean I played with Kobe at his attitude, man, his the way he approached it and attacked yeah. the game was just crazy. What was it? Talk about being his teammate. Because, you know, you hear well, he's I was so older hard too. driving. Okay, so I was it was older. different for you. So we had a – matter of fact, he still owed me $500 for a shooting game, and I told him that <laughs> last year. And, you know, um, but I was older. So I – He had, he had respect, a different level of respect diff- for yeah. you, yeah. But I could tell, you know, people, teammates walked around on eggshells around him a little bit because – he was so demanding in some aspect. But I think, you know, the ironic part is that you come to this sense of reality of finalization yeah, where as you yeah. get older and that your career is winding down and you start to look back at who you were as a person and you mature and you do things a little bit differently. Yeah. When I was on the team, we would be on the team play and we sit up front and Kobe kind of would sit in the back, kind of separated. Okay. So it's tough to be a leader when you're not really interacting with the group like that. You know, after mm-hmm. practice, guys mess around in the locker room, Kobe, be out. Wow. So during a, a tough situation in the game, when you need, it's really hard for somebody that's disconnected on a social and personal level. I'm not saying you gotta be best friends. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Bird and Mikhail weren't best yeah. friends. But you have to have some kind of interaction team-wise. And I think as he got older in his career, he realized that's the part that, uh, probably was missing for him. Yep. You know, and, and I say this too. He was dealing with a lot. Think about this. And I, and I said this. His last game, when he scored 60, what was it? 60 I, I, on 50 shots. Yeah, I was at the, I was at the game. I was about to leave in the third quarter. I was like, hold up. He's, <laughs> this gonna last get game and his retirement celebration. Yeah, the jersey retirement. Yeah. Did you notice Ooh. anything that was missing? His parents. That's right. Yeah. Think and about, that was around, was that around the time when you were well, there? That it, yeah, they kinda, I mean, because you had the issue with his mom with the memorabilia, yeah, the some memorabilia, of the stuff. Yep. You know, some riffs going on in regards to the father. I knew his sister really well. Mm-hmm. and they, You know, at the beginning, they were always at the game. Yep. So imagine the career he's had. You deal with the incident of Denver. Yep. Yep. You got the incident, now you got the whole family makeup. So you, last game of your career, no acknowledgement, nobody's there from your family. Yeah. Your retirement jersey, your retirement um, celebration, yeah. nobody's there. So you never know what a it's guy tough. is dealing with internally of why he may isolate yeah. himself and be secluded. Kobe came from Italy, came to Philly, didn't fit in. Basketball was his refuge. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to get it done. Didn't relate to the neighborhood guys that much. So what do you do? Seclude himself. Yeah. You go right to the NBA. You don't have a chance to go to college to kind of get that broadened perspective of team. Yeah. Yep. You go to the NBA at 18, grown men. You, don't you have them. no relate relationship with them, or how can you relate? So what do you do? You isolate yourself. That's so people don't really look at it like that in regards to his path yep. and why he did things. And I kind of understood it. I was fortunate to spend time with Kobe. We go out to eat and talk. And people, bodyguards looked at me like, you know, Kobe don't do this, you know. I'm like, man, I'm a te- I love going out with my teammates, yeah. but I got a better, not that we talked about everything yeah. in depth, but I got a better sense of why and how and the thought process. Yeah. So yeah. I, I look at them a lot differently. Well, that's good stuff, man. Let's get to some of the modern, okay. the current NBA, what's going on. Isaiah Thomas made his debut yeah. Tuesday Team against play. Portland. Oh, you know what? A lot of people say they're surprised that he came back and – played the way he did. Mm-hmm. I'm not from the perspective that you got so much enthusiasm, energy, that you will call and play hard. Now, yeah. how you play after that? How do you how does your body respond? 
okay, to the wear, the more wear and tear once that adrenaline level comes mm -hmm. down. He's playing on straight adrenaline. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And plus, guys haven't seen him play in a while, so they, they oh yeah, I remember, but I they ain't seen him. So now the scouting report ain't there. Okay. They know what he want, wanted to do, but it's a different situation here in Cleveland than it was in Boston when he was the primary ball hammer. Yep. So I was happy for him because you could see that sense of relief of finally I'm back on the court. And I think you saw the good body language you know, from the Cavs. Yep, I agree. Oh, we got another playmaker. Now, how he moves forward, especially on back-to-back -back games, is going to be important. Because your body has to go through that transition of getting acclimated to playing that hard, mm -hmm. that fast, in a short time period. But I thought the debut, come on, man, you can, what was it, 17, 17 points in 19, 19 minutes? Yep, yep. Plus 17 with him on the floor. That, that's what I'm saying. Yep. So yep. it's, and it, again, I'm pro players from that perspective because I've been hurt before. Yep. And I get it. You know. What, what do you think will be the biggest obstacle to him and LeBron excelling together? Or you think it'll be simple? Well, it's never simple when you're used to handling the ball. You play point, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Imagine the ball it's being out, yeah, you gotta, imagine the ball <laughs> being out of your hand. Yep. Okay. In situations where last year in Boston, which was tough because it was easy to guard Boston last year because you knew Isaiah was the playmaker. So you can that's why, you know, Cleveland you can take him out of it. Yep. Because yep. he had no one else. But he was so used to having to do this, mm -hmm. get guys mm -hmm. in. This year, it's going to be a little bit different. But I think he's, ex I don't, we don't know yet, but I think he's accepted his role in regards to he knows that at times he's going to have it. Yeah. But at times, I can be as effective on the wing after LeBron swings it to me than I can catch and go. So that's yeah. a different mindset. I think they can be better. Now, Kyrie was the best player in that trade. Yeah. But I think when you add in Jay Crowder, um, I think they could be better than they were last year. What's, what's your thought on that? The, the team is much better. So think, you think Cleveland's yeah, team? Think, they obviously the bench, what, too. What, yeah, think bench about the, the manipulation the lineups you can have. If you really want to go at Golden State mm -hmm. and force them to have to guard you, you can have five three-point shooters. You can have LeBron, Isaiah, Corver, yeah. Kevin Love, and who am I missing? Maybe JR or, 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 I mean, or JR or Crowder or JR. So now you yep. got five guys yep. that you can spread and Jeff out. Jeff Green can. Now, can if you want to go a little bit bigger, more physical, you can have D Wade. Say LeBron is off the court, which was an issue at yep, times. Yep. But you got D Wade, IT, Tristan. Okay, you can have JR in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. can defend and do some. Yep. And Jeff Green. Yep. So you got more lineups depending on what you want to do. If you want to play more of a bigger physical and have LeBron get some rest, you can still have enough scoring punch to do something without losing it. But now we can be more physical and mm -hmm. rebound. If you want straight shooters, I can go with this lineup. Yep. So I think this year they've manipulated it enough where now they, they're not just stuck with one. I'll tell you who benefited the most with Isaiah being out is Kevin Love. Yep, exactly. I mean, so you think you sound like you think they got a decent oh, shot against I, Golden State? I do State. because when they beat Golden State, they were able to be more physical. Yep. You think I about agree. the lineups I talked about; these guys can be physical in the playoffs, as you know. They're gonna let you get away with stuff, in particular off the ball. See, where they were physical with Golden State, it wasn't when Steph got it a lot of mm -hmm. times. Steph and Clay, when they had to fight off the picks and disrupt the timing. That's when they kind of threw Golden State yeah, off a little yeah. bit. And and now I think Cleveland has the players to do it. You know, you ain't going to stop Durant, bro. Yeah. It, it just, yeah. just – some dudes you just not going to stop. <laughs> but the other guys, I think you can make them less efficient. And, win again, you got to think yeah. about how you go – I always think about this, Chris. How can I win in a seven-game series? It's not two, not yeah. one. How can I win in seven games? And they, and they kind of built the lineup, I think, if they stay healthy – that this could be re real intriguing. You feel like it's definitely Golden State versus oh, Cleveland yeah. in the finals? No question. Yeah. Because Houston. Houston doing the same thing that we, that we figured out they'll do. Yeah. Defense go fail. I love Chris Paul being there. He's going to be able to guard mm -hmm. a lot better from the point guard position. But because the emphasis for Dan Tony is not on correcting little things during the course of the year, that it comes back to haunt <laughs> you later on again. One game, Houston, better watch out. Two yeah, yeah. If it was a five-game series like it used to be back in the yeah. day in, in the first three, few rounds, two out of three, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, 
But a seven-game series, I gotta, I gotta rely on my mind to say Houston is gonna be disciplined enough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in seven games in mm-hmm. a seven-game series. Now, what do you think about Oklahoma? They've turned one twelve of their last seventeen. You think they can be a threat in Just the West? Imagine if they're the fourth or fifth yeah. in the West. Yeah. I think they beat Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Big, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. th- that's perfect for them. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's perfect. Now, if you're Golden State, you really don't want to see them at four. Second round. You see what I'm saying? You, you got to exert a lot of energy. You got to exert a lot of energy. And it's going to be a, it's emotional <laughs> energy because of Durant and Westbrook. Yeah, so you're going to be, you're going to have to answer these questions. Forget about the game part of it. Anything that goes on between Westbrook, like we yeah, saw before, yeah, yeah. you're going to have to answer it. So yeah. not only are you dealing with the physical aspect of just two teams that got talent mm-hmm. going on, you got to deal with the mental part of it, okay? That's and true. that wears you down. So you rather, not to go and say the scared of yeah. them, but you rather have them be in that fifth position than that I fourth. Agree. Or agree. bump up the three. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know or, what I, mean? I mean, Houston could get the one, the one seed. So you play with Iverson. Mm-hmm. Who's been compared to Westbrook? I think there's some similarities. Yeah. How challenging is it to play with a guy that's you know like that? I had a ball playing with AI. Okay, I, honestly, um, the challenge is the that you that he thinks he can do it by himself. Yeah. But it goes back on the organization too, because the organization think about how they flipped the script. They traded Tim Thomas. They traded Jerry Stackhouse. This is, this is in Philly. I got traded. Um, so they surrounded him, and this is not knocking any guys. You had Eric Snow, yeah. Aaron McKee, Tyrone Hill, George Lynch. George Lynch. You had Joe Smith in there. You, but yeah. you had complimentary yeah. guys that didn't need the ball. They did all the dirty work, and they let AI be AI. Yeah. Again, the game was different at that time because you could be more physical, and the three point shot wasn't as prevalent. Yeah. But they built the team around AI that complemented what he wanted to do. What were mentioning Iverson? What's your best AI story that you can tell? Oh man. <laughs> I mean, I got. I mean, I tell you what, AI used to come to come to the game with McDonald's, man. Eating I mean, in Mac, the oh, in the locker, French fries, Big Mac. I mean, and, he, <laughs> and after every game, he loved to go to Fridays too. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, he loved to go to Fridays, right? But I mean, that I'm like on City City Road. Yeah, 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 the blue line, everything yeah. out there. He just, dog, he can go hang and do what he wanted to do. But one thing AI never did, he didn't miss games, man. Yeah. And if, if he was tired, war, it didn't matter. He was bringing it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I was just like, man, this dude is different. <laughs> no, yeah. seriously, I mean, the way he competed. You know, and I used to go back and forth with him a lot of times. Like, dog, you, you and Larry Brown, this thing, you're not gonna beat him. But yeah. figure out within your game how you get your game off. Yeah. Run pick more pick and rolls. Do this. You ain't gonna win that battle. And it was headstrong between the two of them. Yeah, yeah. But eventually, AI once they figured it out, he always talks in reverence, high yeah, regard right. to Larry Brown. It was now. his best year. What's more important to guys? And I it know depends. it's different. It depends. Okay. It depends. It depends on who you are and where you're at in your career. When you're young, you, you feel like you've got to prove right. yourself. Yeah. And being a man meaning i got to prove myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which you do. You want to get that max deal. Yeah. You want to become an all-star. all-star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So winning it. has is balanced with i got to make sure I get mine. Yeah. In the, in my thing is you you got to be selfish, trust me, to be good. But you got to be selfish in the right way where it doesn't hurt your team. Okay. Okay? That's the difference. We all selfish in some mm-hmm. aspect. You selfish in your career as far as broadcasting. Yeah. Hey, listen, you want to be the best. You want to see yourself in the in the top seat. Yep. What's wrong with that? Yep. You, in order to be the best you can be, you got to push yourself and be a little selfish mm-hmm. to say what you want. It's no different than a basketball player. So when people talk about being selfless, come on, man, stop it. Yeah. It's, if you can't, <laughs> you, it's no exactly. way you're going to be able to be the guy you want to be without having some selfishness. But it just can't spill over and hurt the team. Right? What about LeBron? Best Boy. move for him this summer. Boy. My best move would be staying in Cleveland. Stay. When because he got I, so much control. Yeah. You know, every and you, they're close. They're, they're, Are they they're, close? They're, they're, who go beat them? You you talking about Boston still? Yeah, they with, got the with East Tatum a lot. and Brown young. Bring Gordon Hayward yeah. back. That's fine. They're still young, especially yeah. this year. Yeah. Okay. If he goes where, you going to Houston? Trust me. 
he gonna play for Mike and be upset about the little stuff. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, because even the though way he, LeBron, he's such, come on, he's man, right, he's because he's not gonna settle for yeah, mediocrity, that's and that's point. what Mike gives you from a defensive perspective and execution, and he doesn't hold anybody accountable. Mm -hmm. Okay, great to play for. <laughs> so, where do you where do you go that gives you he the won't control? Go to San Antonio. You don't get control at all. Now I've said. I think if LeBron had played for a Pat Riley, a Greg Popovich, early or a Phil, early, probably early. But hey, to be honest, at any point in his career, I think he'd have more rings because I think they would have been able to really coach yeah. him. Well, you, you know think about I mean? when he came in, it was Silas. Yep, Silas. Then who was it? Mike Brown. Was yeah, Mike Brown afterwards. Yep. Yep. So Silas was kind of on his way out. Mike was coming in, so he had to adhere. Yeah, and he had to. And Mike was more of a defensive minded coach. Yep. You got this this unbelievable talent. I haven't coached at a high level. He doesn't probably have the respect for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. I think he would have been more disciplined. They would have probably formed the team a little bit differently, too, mm -hmm. those early years in Cleveland. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I had a chance, to, and I know playing for those coaches, what it's like being held accountable. Pat Riley. Yeah. Just going at Alonzo. Some debate now seems to be between who's the best player in the world now. Is it LeBron or is it Kevin Durant? Stop it, man. I'm, I'm with LeBron by hair, though. Yeah. I think it's getting closer. No, it's good. Yeah, because LeBron getting older, too. Yeah, true. Of true. course, it should. <laughs> it should. If LeBron is in his 15th year and KD, what is this? His 10th. 10th. Or not, 11th, I think. Yeah, 11th? okay. It's supposed, it should be because yep. KD is that kind of talent. Yeah. Okay? It should. We should be saying there's a 1A and 1B. But it's ironic that... That 1A is in his 15th year. Exactly. That's unbelievable. Can you imagine this? I can imagine if I never got hurt, a significant injury, where my career, I'm, I'm not going to say I'd be LeBron yeah, yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. but I can just imagine, I, in my mind, yeah. I'm LeBron, I'm the, you know what I mean? In my mind, yeah. not being hurt. That is, in today's game, how hard they play, with the, and the training aspect, yeah, it gets you better but you're training a lot more so mm -hmm. you're putting more wear and tear in your body at an earlier age too mm -hmm. come on 15 this, this you, you, you haven't had significant and you're yeah. still playing now he doesn't have a quick first step yeah he sometimes he has a problem finishing at times yeah. but that's 15 years exactly. but you're still saying that he's slightly above kd the best, other best, the player. Other best yeah, player who's like really in his prime yeah I'm with you. I mean, and, and I and, love KD. And you can't, people say, well, because he came out of high school. No, because there's a lot of guys that came out of high school and their careers end early. They might play 10 or 12 years. But, but not at. No, they end, like McGrady. Yep. Uh, Andy Injury, Curry. Andy Curry. Al Harrington had a long career. But, still, you know, like a lot but, of but guys But even on the back out, end, give Kevin O'Neal. Kevin Durant, on the back end of his career, he slowed down. You can see the difference. Yo, Garnett. Yeah, Garnett. yeah, yeah. You yep. can see it when he was in yep. Boston near the end. You oh, can yeah. see the no difference question. even yep. when he went back to Minnesota. Yeah. But no this question. dude is still yeah, it's, it's, at a – I think he might be from Ju Jupiter or Mars <laughs> somewhere. Seriously, man. Seriously. Nah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, and you can have that debate. I just love it because what he's done for the game – and again, you don't have to be a LeBron James to understand the impact on what he's done in regards to the social um, content that he's brought, mm -hmm. the awareness, the ability for players to say, I can be an entrepreneur oh, yeah. in my space and still play. Whereas when I played, it was taboo to yeah. want to do something else outside of the sport. Yeah. He's yeah. opened up all these avenues for people to be able to emulate that, yeah, you know what I mean, in their own way, and they are. The and so, is trying it, yep. and I tell people all the time, if you're listening to this, watching this, you take greatness for granted until it's gone, okay? Because we're seeing this, we're so accustomed and we're so used to it, and now it's like, well, LeBron, I'm tired of. Now, how can you be tired of greatness? Mm -hmm. When you get tired of it, then when it goes away, you start thinking. That's why we we relish the Michael Jordan years. Yep. Yep. Because we're so accustomed to that greatness and we took it for granted. And now that it's gone, we wish we could relive mm -hmm. a lot of that. Well, enjoy it. The Golden State Warriors, how they play. That's greatness. You know what I mean? Yeah. LeBron James of what he's able to do. Stop knocking this hustle 
on other stuff and yeah. enjoy what he's doing and appreciate it. We gonna miss it. There's what? no question. I mean, fortunately, it looks like it's gonna be here for a little. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be, little it's gonna be here for a little while longer. <laughs> Jim Jackson, on, man, man, great OH job. Die, yes, right. O H one O. O H I O. I should say. I'm, I'm embarrassing him. <laughs> All right, peace. All right, here we are uh, once again for. Knock down Jay with my man, Jason McIntyre. Happy New Year, Happy man. Happy New Good Year, Chris. You. Good to be you back. You looking better in 2018. Was a little fly this you year. You looked a little sloppy oh, in 2017. Now you're looking better. step up my game, man. New right. Year's that's, resolution. That's the resolution? Yes, okay. that's one of them. You should. It, the other one should be to try to hold your own in Knock Down Jay because okay. I've been knocking you down. You like have been. But Tyson I get back up every time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, All right, what you got for me? All right, so uh, I want to get started with Isaiah Thomas. The big story this week in the NBA, Cavs at Boston, Isaiah returns, and the big story was the tribute video for Isaiah Thomas. Okay. Chris, I, I got to say, this was puzzling to me. One of the most storied franchises in NBA history, most titles in the league, and you're giving a tribute video to a guy who spent two and a half years there and didn't get to a, a championship, didn't win anything? Well, Wasn't the MVP of the league, Chris? I, I like Isaiah Thomas. I know he's revered in Boston. I don't think he deserved a tribute video. Well, they didn't give him the tribute video, but they will. They said they plan to in the future. He didn't want it because his family wouldn't be there. I get it. In most cases, you wouldn't give a tribute video to a guy who's only been there two years, especially if he didn't lead you to a championship, there especially in Boston, where, as you said, it's all about titles. However, okay, looking at what he did last year, Basically 29 points a game, second most points per game in, in Boston Celtics history behind Larry Bird. When you consider the great players they've had play there, he was second. That's something to shout about. Okay, if you a nice standing right. ovation. Fifth in MVP voting All right. last year. Leads them to the number one seed over LeBron James in the Eastern Conference. Leads them to the Eastern Conference Finals. Plays one day after his sister yes. is tragically killed in an auto accident. Scores 33 points in that game. Then, oh, not even a month later, on what would have been her 23rd birthday, drops 53. I remember that game. And he's 5'9". Yes. So I think all of that plus the emotion that he showed when he was traded. I mean, it hurt him. He loved being in Boston. It had become his team. The fans loved him. I think all of that conspired to lead the Celtics to do this tribute okay. video. I'm with you. Look, don't retire his number. That would be ridiculous. Uh, well, that was going to be my next thing. No, Are you no, going to no. retire his number no, at this No, no. If this was a retirement, jersey retirement or something like that, I'd be with you. But a video tribute. Okay. It's not a big Did deal. Did Kyrie Irving a video get tribute. a tribute video? With the well, Cle Kyrie hold on, hold demanded on. a Kyrie trade. Kyrie Irving hit the most, one of the most clutch shots in the organization's history. In Game Seven of the NBA Finals, he final. wanted out. He demanded a trade. Like that's a totally okay, different thing. Enough. Isaiah Thomas loved being in Boston. Didn't want to go. Kyrie demanded a trade. Okay, so Paul George spent six or seven years in Indiana. Got to two Eastern Conference Finals. Demanded he a also, trade. So I mean, you, come on. So that's where you draw the line. It's if you the difference a trade. between okay. you, you broke up with me. You dumped me. So, they, they dumped their franchises. Kevin Durant that's had an amazing if, 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 run if, if in you, OKC. You dumped me. That's what happened. So, okay, so if you leave voluntarily or ask to be traded, no tribute video. And if you get traded, you'll get a tribute video. When are we going to see the Zach Levine, difference. Zach Levine, however his name's pronounced, are we going to see a video tribute for him in Minnesota? He won you, two are dunk you, contests. Are you comparing, okay, so you comparing winning no, a I dunk was, contest. I was kind of joking, yeah, but I'm saying like. Because you got nothing left. Jimmy Butler. You ready no, to move no, no, on? I'm not ready I, to move I've on. destroyed Jimmy, your Jimmy argument. Butler. Jimmy Butler. Does he get a tribute video in Chicago? He may. No, I, I don't mean, know. Have they been back? They've probably been back. I'm sure. I don't know if he did. I guess he I, didn't. That's a fair question. Like, I, 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 I would just, not. Chris, I like, would not it, give. I don't. You know, if they gave Jimmy Butler a tribute video, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's just. It's a video. It's again. It's not a jersey retirement. It's not giving him but a trophy. But at the same time, Isaiah's court. being very petty about this. Like, How's he being you petty? guys kicked me to the curb. Oh, uh, uh, he could have come back tonight, his first game against Boston. But he said, oh, no, I'm going to come back against the Blazers, and I'm going to skip the Boston game. And then the well, next time all, the Cavs – I, doubt, on, the I think it's more time, on the Cavs than it is on well, Isaiah. Well, the next time the Cavs go to Boston, it's the Paul Pierce uh, okay. ceremony. So they can't do Isaiah then. 
I, it just seems like Isaiah's ma- making too much out of this. Maybe Wait, it's me. Of, I, and it, I don't, it is you. I'm not hating on Isaiah. It is you. Because I think it's more on the Cavs deciding when he's going to play than it is on Isaiah. I mean, look, this is a guy that, as I said, played on the birthday of his sister who was tragically killed. I, I get, I this is a guy who's 5'9 and has to overcome all those obstacles to be a great player. This is a guy that played through a hip injury that was far worse than anybody knew. And you're going to question his mental toughness? Because that's not, what you're questioning. I'm not, I'm not. When you question that he oh, couldn't go back it. to Boston, what, he couldn't face him? Well, he's what? already said he he cannot stand Danny Ainge. He may never talk okay, to him again. But that's got nothing to do with your mental toughness. You don't toughness. think it's being petty? He should want to get out there I, and battle the former team. I don't care about being team. petty. I care about are you mentally tough. And this guy has shown time and time uh, again see, that's the he problem. is You're mentally tough. You're making me out tough. to be an Isaiah Thomas hater, and that's not true. I like him. I just have an issue with tribute videos. And I draw the line at two and a half years in Boston, not winning jack squat. And let's they, move they on. They had let's the number on. one seed. Uh, ooh. ooh. Uh, Ky- Kyrie. Ky- uh, how about Kyle I hope, Lowry? I hope he I got hope, a tribute video. I hope your huh? next argument is Jeez. better than your first. All right. Let, let's get to the next one. Um, Not I, down, I Jay. know you are. Get up, Jay. I know, Jay. I, get up, Jay. I know you're what? a Cleveland guy. You are Mr. Ohio. I live there. You know? You, uh, all listen. city in basketball. All city. All city. Wow. I did Woodley not know that. Gym. Can we look that up? Can Cleveland we get the research State. team just to confirm that? Um... I know you love LeBron. I love LeBron. I enjoy watching him. I said, I believe last time, this is the best season LeBron's ever had. But it's right not, now, Chris, right now, he's not the best player in the NBA. The better, better, the best player in the NBA right now is Kevin Durant. The better offensive player, Kevin Durant versus LeBron. Kevin Durant. The better defensive player, Kevin Durant versus LeBron. Kevin Durant. The more clutch player who dominated in the finals, in the fourth quarter when it mattered, Kevin Durant. He's playing fewer minutes than LeBron, so don't come at me with points <laughs> per game, okay? He's playing fewer minutes. He is right now, Kevin Durant, the best player in the so NBA. So you're, are you saying Kevin Durant's better than LeBron, period? Like, right now. Because you're, you said this is the best season of LeBron's career. But, well, and that's if the best it, season of his career, he's not even the best player in the league, then that no, must mean you think Kevin Durant's... The best season when you take into account his teammates and his age and his durability. But when you're just saying the best player in the NBA right now... Okay. Kevin Durant's the best player. First of all, it's not LeBron's best season. We've already talked about okay. that because defensively he's not close to what he used to be. He's actually a negative defensive real plus minus. Okay. So clearly he's not the defender he used to be. It's close. I'll give you that. Like for the first time in about a decade, it's close. I first think, I think, no, seriously. I mean, Steph LeBron, Curry, LeBron's uh, been the best player in the league. Unanimous MVP, Steph Curry. Sorry. Sorry. I had to clear that. MVP doesn't, was Russell, is Russell Westbrook the best player he in the league? He wasn't unanimous. Still, it doesn't matter. You're Proceed not the, with your okay, argument. You, try to, try nobody to, try thought to Steph was down. the best player in the league. All right, he was MVP. There's a difference. Here's the deal. It is close for the first time in about a decade. But I, I think it's they're neck and neck. But I would give LeBron still the slight edge. Here's why. But first, let me give you Durant, Durant's advantages. He is a better defender at this stage of his career. Lead He's third most in the blocks league, in the NBA. Third in the league in blocks, blocks per, per game. game. Yeah. I, I give him mad credit with LeBron's age and Durant stepping it up on the defensive end. He is a better defender. He's obviously a better shooter. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And while LeBron, you know, his statistics bear out that he is a clutch guy, I would rather have the ball in Durant's hands if I got a last play because he's just a better shooter. Unstoppable. And LeBron likes to take a three at the end of the game and – I'd rather have Durant taking that three than LeBron. However, here's why I would take LeBron James. Number one, LeBron still controls the tempo of a game unlike anybody in the league, period, the end. Look at the score of that game on Christmas Day, 99-92 Golden State. Low-scoring game, one of the Golden State's lowest-scoring games of the year. Curry didn't why? play. Curry didn't play. But, but still. They were running up tons of points even without Curry. The difference is that against LeBron, he's the one player in the league, player. Spurs can do it. Grizzlies have done it. But one player in the league that can slow the Warriors down and make them play a slower game. He did it in 2015 without Kyrie and Love when they almost won that finals. He did it in 2016 when they did win the finals. So Durant cannot control the tempo of a game 
like LeBron can. Secondly, we know, it's not even a question, LeBron is a far better facilitator and passer. Yes, no doubt. Now, Durant did do an admirable job of kind of running the team when Steph was out. I think he's averaging five assists per game. That's better than admirable. LeBron is averaging nine this year. Yes, LeBron's a better LeBron, for his career, averages close to eight. So, again, he's getting more guys involved, more of a facilitator. And while Durant is a better shooter, without question, LeBron is far, far more efficient. It's not even close. LeBron James is shooting 56% from the floor with Kevin Love as his second option. In other words, without any other teammate who can create his own offense, LeBron shooting 56, 57%. Durant, check this out, without Steph, Durant was shooting 46% from the field. He shot over 50% or 50% or better in only four of the 11 games without Steph. I was at the Lakers game where Durant hit the great game winner. Yeah, but but prior to that, my that. goodness, it was eye-opening how tough it was for him to get his buckets. And he got dunked on by your boy Larry Nance. By Larry Nance, <laughs> yeah. For, for him to get his buckets. Durant has always had the luxury of playing with another, a point guard who is a tremendous shot creator. Westbrook, you got to pay attention to Westbrook. Steph, you obviously have to pay attention to Steph. So Durant's had that luxury. Without one of them, i.e. in LeBron's situation, he's, he's not fine. that efficient of a score. 46, 47 percent is this good, yeah. but it's not tremendous like LeBron. Finally, Durant's per PER. Mm-hmm. And I know you're a big PER guy. I'm not a big PER okay. guy. Okay. <laughs> 24.9, I What's think. LeBron 30. LeBron's third. LeBron's second in the league. Right. Durant's 12th in the league, second on his own team. Steph is fourth in the league at 29. I would make the argument. Now, Kevin Durant is the Warriors' best player. Best player. But I would say their most important player is Steph Curry because of the way he stretches the defense. Mm -hmm. They play that fluid ball movement, player movement offense when Steph's in there. When Steph was gone, they weren't playing that way. They were a lot more ISO, a lot playing like everybody else. So for all those reasons, you still give I would still LeBron. give the slight edge. It's close, but I would give the slight edge to LeBron. Yeah, it, it, and I think after very... what I just said, you would too. No, I mean, I, I would agree it's close. But uh, look, I just want to go back. I've never heard you that quiet. I, well, I, I mean, that, like... was, you, that was a lot. That was about that was a three minutes. That was like a three-minute argument. I guess I want to go back to your second point was, you know, listen, he's LeBron is playing with vastly inferior players, okay? He's passing to Iman Shumpert and Jose Calderon as his point guard. So from He's that perspective, I sense. would agree. But when they go head-to-head, Chris, game three, Durant torched him He's in the finals. The best Christmas of him. Day, yep. head-to-head, end of the game. Maybe there's a foul. We can argue that, but... Durant well, locked not, him no, down. We can't argue that. That's definitive. Oh, they missed the call. The, the refs admitted the foul. Whatever. I mean, come on. There's, I mean, it, a foul it was a on foul. Every play in the it NBA was two, fi- two but, fouls on that play and a third foul with a minute bottom, ten. I, I just feel head to head right now. I give the edge to uh, two. He's seven, gotten eight. the best of him. Clearly got the best yeah. of him on Christmas Day, and I do give Durant credit for taking the challenge of guarding LeBron because mm-hmm. Draymond's your best defender. That's like me sitting in this chair. Nobody wants to battle okay, you that's right. on NBA, and, you, and I'm I like, give yeah, you props I'm for here, the I'm here. All right, let's move on to our final right. topic. Heavy on the Eastern Conference this week, Chris. Um, you know, we're looking at what's going on in the East, and I think without question there is only one threat to the Cavaliers. One. Not your Wizards. Not your 76ers. How's Joel Embiid do doing? Is he all right? I'm just checking in. Okay. He's the man. He's, he's doing, the best he's doing big great. man in the league. Great. Pure. So the only, <laughs> the only threat to the Cleveland Cavaliers in the East is the Boston Celtics, led by the best coach in the East, Brad Stevens, the best player outside of LeBron in the East, Kyrie Irving, really? the most close. He's better than Adetokounmpo? Yes. What has a Tutacupo done in the place playoffs? Let me finish my argument. Best coach, best player, best bench, number one defensive efficiency team in the league in the Boston Celtics. And I believe when you add all that up, they are the only threat to the Cavs. There is no threat to the Cavs in the East. None. I'm sorry. No. Boston is not a threat at all. At all. They not will a get, threat at all. They will get waylaid in the playoffs. What, 4-3 or 4 2 at best, 4-2. At best. It will not be a the, – the series won't be in question. There won't be a point where we're like, oh, my. They might beat the – they're not the, – who's the best player in that series? LeBron. Okay. Who's the second best? Kyrie. Okay. Who's the third best? 
He's Jason the Tate. Jason Tate. He's better than Kevin Love. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm okay, kidding. Kevin Love. No, no. Or the Isaiah. Is hold, the on, hold on. Threat. Hold on. Or Isaiah Thomas, right? The Cavs Isaiah have Thomas, yeah. three of the four best players in the series, right? Right. And they got the best player, and that player has a better supporting cast. So how are the Celtics I, I, beating? I, I, well, the, again, Kyrie Irving because uh, of Brad that's, Stevens. That's a horrible argument, Chris. Because you were here saying no, the that, Houston I'm Rockets going have at a it thirty percent chance. You go down the roster. The Warriors have like four of the best five players in that series. So uh, listen, the Celtics I'm have the best shot. I'm just going at it a different you way. You don't want to look at the numbers, the defensive efficiency, the way okay. to slow them down. So it's number Toronto's one. fifth in the league in defensive uh, and efficiency. Who's number one? The number one threat, the Celtics, and they have the better coach, Brad Stevens versus Ty Lue. Okay. That's a no-brainer. Again, Stevens last year, is better, by but the way, who's settling it? Last the players. Year, last year when they were going head-to-head, -head, and the Celtics were vastly inferior last year. I don't even think it was close. Kyrie They're on the – Vastly yeah. inferior this year. So too. they win one game without Isaiah Thomas. He didn't even play in that one. Marcus Smart went off. They win, and the you, you next game – You think the Cavs took that game seriously? I mean, seriously. The next game, what happened? They let Toronto get two games a year before. I mean, come on. What happened in the game after Boston won? It was neck and neck in the fourth quarter. Who took over? Who went bananas? Not LeBron. Kyrie Irving. Okay. They have, the Celtics okay. have the most clutch, I would argue the most clutch player in the NBA. I believe he's number two in the clutch points so far this season. LeBron, your guy's number one, obviously. But, I, <laughs> but you would argue so he's who's, the most who's clutch the biggest player in the threat to the, Who's the biggest threat to the Cavs? <laughs> you want to edit that point out? No, no, that, just, that stands. He just nullified his whole no, statement. Kyrie, the most clutch player in the East, is going to lead the one team that can challenge the Cavs, the Celtics. Look, I love Kyrie. So you're okay. saying the you Celtics can't even just, name they, a team? They aren't that good. You're that on let, the no, Cavs' jock? Let me finish. You they, won't even name no, a team? I'm that down on the Eastern Conference. I'm sorry. It's a conference of pretty good and mediocre and bad teams. One, there's only one elite team in that conference, period, the end, and it's in Cleveland. Without Kyrie, yet yeah, still, because Isaiah Thomas – I liked what I saw. Oh, 17 last minutes. Night. Hold me back, Chris. No, 17 uh, points. So, 17 in points 19 in 19 minutes. minutes. Oh, my goodness. 19 minutes. But look, I, look, Holy cow. Isaiah the... Thomas could be out the rest of the year, and I still would have said the same thing. Cleveland is just better. LeBron James is still in his prime. He's not losing to two, a 19 year old and a 20 year old, being the second and third best players or two of the best four players we, if you want to give Al Horford some props. We need the staff here to chart I'm sorry. the time on this argument because I'm going to revisit this in May when this series is heated oh, yeah, and it's 1-1 one, one, or right. it's 2-1. I am let telling me, let you, let me get to some I will points. ride with Tatum, Smart, Brown, Kyrie, Brad Stevens. That team is going to give LeBron all he can handle. Because remember, beat him? are they going to beat him? I believe it's a toss-up right now. Here's why. And, I, why? and I've and i argued this. Let me, let me tell LeBron, you something. LeBron, hold on. It's your podcast, but I need to interrupt. LeBron will have to go through, I believe, the Sixers, which is not going to be easy. Ooh. Embiid, you you love Embiid. Not going to be Let's easy. Let's throw a birthday party for not Embiid. Not going to be easy. Ben Simmons and Embiid's going to give him some problems. Then Giannis News in round two. Newsflash, rookies don't win in the I NBA. know, but it ain't going to be a okay. cakewalk. And then in round two, Giannis, who I believe is the best 23 and under player in the league. And then when they're a little worn down, this isn't the Hawks and the Joker Raptors. This is real. Young, good, talented players are going to push LeBron in the first two rounds. Boston is going to be there to challenge him. I think it's a toss-up. First toss of up. all, you have no idea how the seeding's going to play out. Well, I mean, in a perfect world. Philadelphia's in a not even in the playoffs. They're going to get in. Who knows if Detroit's Boston will get on? the first seed? Can we do I mean, a segment on Detroit, Stan Van Gundy? Can I, I no. mean, so, so that argument, come on. Look, here's the deal. Boston got hot, started off 22-4, and four, was great. Late, since then, they've been 8-6. and six. Yep. They are Schedule closer. Brutal. They are closer to the Stop. eight and six team oh, than they are okay. to a twenty-two. If and I've got to pull out a gun and put now, it to your head and say who is the number one contender to the Cavs in the East, who is it? There is none. Oh, stop. now I will say this: okay, Boston, Toronto, Washington. They're all on the same level. Toronto's got one of the best defensive in the, defenses in the league. Fifth, I told you, in defensive efficiency, a better backcourt. Kyle Lowry is a very good defender. And I hadn't been great in the playoffs, but he he will give Kyrie, I you know, do, he'll make Kyrie think work. think about this. When you see Toronto playoffs. take finish, the court against finish. LeBron, these guys wet their pants, dude. And Boston they got didn't. so embarrassed And Boston year. didn't. Boston got a game Boston, 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 Boston A game, game that Cleveland basically gave oh, away. Okay. And it's even like getting the game. Warriors so, gave away a game in the finals. Fine, there you go, fine. LeBron. Here's some charity. That's fine. Okay. I mean, it's don't like tell me a game. They, don't brag about a, going five with somebody. Toronto. That's what you're doing. Okay. Toronto has been to the Eastern Conference Finals with this crew, with this backcourt of DeMar DeRozan 
and Kyle Lowry. They went to the second round last year. They are playoff experienced. I'm just saying they're on the same level as Boston. They won 14 of their last 17, have played better than the Celtics for the past month. You're, you're so Washington just lately. beat the Celtics. Celtics 8-6 and six Those in their last two teams 14. have the best what back. What about the Rockets 1-5 and five in their last six? What are you bringing that up about your boys? Huh? Huh? Look, I think Toronto and Washington are right there with the Celtics. They're Washington. all three. They're all three on the same Washington? level. Yeah. Why? They're all three on the same level. Because they got a they got a better backcourt. They got a very good backcourt. And then both of them got a couple of, you know, solid role players. Or now a couple of few solid role players. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm not saying they beat Boston. So I'm just saying they're on that level. Just to wrap, put a button on it. Can you give me your pecking order, Boston, Toronto, Washington? In order. I probably Right now, I give Boston a slight. Boom! A, well, no, but this I'm, is why I'm but here. I, but I'm not giving them. They're not a threat, though. If you want to say they're the second best team in the East, slightly over Toronto, although Toronto's very close and they're charging, and I want to see how it plays out. And then Washington is fourth. I'm fine with that. My problem is saying Boston is a legitimate threat. Saying Boston's got a is neck and neck, and they got a shot. They don't. Okay. They don't. What about Milwaukee? You haven't mentioned them at all. I mean, what? Giannis, Bledsoe. They could maybe they could be a spoiler. When maybe is Jabari upset Parker coming back? Uh, you know, sometime twenty nineteen or something. All right, look, man, we might find out tonight. At least something. Yeah. You know, maybe your boys will play them tough. You know, I didn't hurt you there, did I? No, no, you got some <laughs> guns though. I give you that. Yeah, you know, maybe Boston will play them tough tonight. Maybe they beat them. If, if Boston wins tonight, do you think that means they're I, better? I will never be that than the guy Cavs? who takes a December or January win and puts any stock in it. Sorry, that's not okay. how I roll. You'll take two December oh, wins. Oh, please. Huh? All right. But anyway, good job, man. Look, you're looking good in 2018. Thank you. Thank you. I hope this is a new trend. This is a new Jason you're dressed for better 2018. Than 2018? Yes. Because yes. you were whack. I'm going to wear an NBA jersey that's in next week. I was, about, I was about to take you off the zone just based oh. on the way you dressed in 2018. Who are you going to replace me with? I don't know. Ain't nobody want to sit up here and challenge you. Gear. True, true. <laughs> but anyway, thanks a lot, man. Great thanks job. Another me. episode of Knockdown J. And in the zone in general, remember, go to iTunes, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, subscribe, leave us a comment, leave us five stars if you like what you hear. And we'll, of course, be back next week with another episode of In the Zone.